In less than a month, the so-called black widow of Las Vegas, Margaret Rudin, could walk out of prison and have her first taste of freedom in 20 years. A jury convicted her of the 1994 brutal murder of her millionaire husband, Ron Rudin. Well, the mysterious case certainly captured the attention of the nation and also kept Las Vegas in suspense for what seemed like an eternity. And 13 investigative reporter Joe Bartels now continues our series, Black Widow, Web of Deception. Businessman Ron Rudin saw the writing on the wall in his troubled marriage to Margaret Rudin, his fifth wife, who was apparently planning to be his final wife. He finally come and he says, John, I have to tell you something. And I says, what's that? And he very rarely would say anything about his private life. He says, this one's got me worried. Ron was right to worry. He confided in his good friend, John Ruther. His marriage seemed to be falling apart, fueled by jealousy, greed, and affairs. Margaret, who had married and divorced four previous men, each one more wealthy than the last, seemed to be working on a scheme to get his vast wealth, which included real estate worth millions, especially in Lee Canyon, and a massive gun collection worth upwards of $3 million. All of a sudden, he turns up missing, and you just wonder what happened. Ron Rudin served during Vietnam. He was regimented and reliable. He checked into work constantly. Ron Rudin was a creature of habit. He always came to work at exactly the same time. He even wore the same stuff every day. It was rare when there was a matter he didn't handle himself. But on Monday, December 19, 1994, Ron failed to show up to his real estate office on Charleston near Decatur. I call in the morning. The secretary says he didn't come in this morning. I says, uh-oh. I turned to my wife in Chicago. I says, I think Margaret did something to Ron. Friends had their suspicions, but it was his employees that went straight to police. When he didn't show up to work that morning at exactly the right time, his co-workers were terrified. They, they knew something had to have happened. But Margaret, on the other hand, didn't seem very concerned. Margaret Rudin told police Ron was in a mood, drinking, and she last saw him the night before. Days turned into weeks and police investigated, but there was no sign of Ron or his black Cadillac. It was too much of a high profile person. The circumstances under which he disappeared were just too suspicious. Retired Las Vegas police homicide detective Phil Ramos says the crucial break in solving Ron Rudin's mysterious disappearance came weeks later purely by luck. You know, there was a group of uh, Nellis Airmen had gone out fishing in the middle of the night. They start making their way back up to the car and, and they're using a flashlight to light up the ground because it was still dark and, and the flashlight illuminates a human skull. January 1995, Ramos and his partner Jimmy Vaccaro are called out to Nelson's Landing, a remote area 40 miles from Las Vegas near Lake Mojave. A burned out chest, feet away, a human skull, and another clue, a distinct custom made bracelet spelling out R-O-N. Dental records would confirm it was the remains of Ron Rudin. It was just so bizarre, man. I mean, we've made hundreds of death notification and, and without exception, except for Margaret, there's always some kind of reaction, some kind of emotional reaction. Margaret Rudin's demeanor puzzled investigators. The investigation revealed Ron was shot at least three times in the back of the head. He was decapitated and his remains burned in what turned out to be an antique chest and Ramos pressed Margaret for answers. And she started to well, um, it was so long ago, and it's not even a month, and, and then she started um, rubbing her eye with, with her index finger, the knuckle of her index finger, and she started rubbing it and rubbing it. And I'm looking at her, and I said, are you okay? Is there anything we can do for you? And she said, no, no, I'm just, I'm just so upset, but with no reaction at all. And then, then it occurred to me why she was rubbing her eyes so hard with her fingers. She was trying to make herself cry because she hadn't shed a tear at all. Ramos and his partner had a look around the humble two-bedroom home, but the quick search turned up nothing useful. Still, the investigation kept pointing them in Margaret's direction. Whenever a spouse uh, is murdered, the first person that you look at is their husband, wife, whoever it may be, the closest person to the victim. Then the next break came on January 25th, 1995, when a mysterious phone call came to Ramos and his partner. They learned Margaret almost immediately began making changes to the Las Vegas home she shared with Ron. She hired handyman Augustine Lovato to remove carpeting and a soiled mattress in the master bedroom. Lovato said the smell 
rancid. And he noticed what looked like red specks of blood on a glamour shot of Margaret that was hanging over the bed. He also offered up a sealed box that Margaret instructed him to mail to her mother out of state. It wasn't a gun inside, but it had something else that gave investigators yet another clue. A picture of a man by the name of Yehuda Sharon. Lovato's tip was the last set of clues police needed to get a search warrant to get back into the house of Ron and Margaret Rudin for a more thorough look around. Tomorrow, the police investigation leads to an indictment, but Margaret had no intention of sticking around for a trial. Joe Bartels, 13 Investigates.